Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lars Jurgens. I'm from EMPA, Swiss Federal Laboratories for Materials Science and Technology. And I'm uh, really happy to present our rec recent work on chemical state analysis by lab-based XPS HUXPES using the newly installed Qantas system. I would like to acknowledge the contribution of Claudia Cancellieri and Fabio Lamatina to this work. So before I uh, present uh, the chemical state analysis results using the Qantas, I will give a rather long introduction on chemical state analysis since it is needed to understand our approach. If you consider the photo emission process, um, we have the energy of the initial system with n electrons plus the energy of the incoming photon and we measure the kinetic energy of the outgoing photoelectron and uh, we have the energy of the final uh, of the system in its final state and minus one electrons and it's important to realize that the binding energy we measure with xps with respect to the vacuum level here is the diff is a difference between the initial and the final state of the system and this implies that we cannot consider the system as frozen during the photo emission process because if we create a core hole in the photo emission process the surrounding electrons will try to screen this and this polarization or the screening energy will be partly um, given to the outgoing photoelectron and uh, part of his kinetic energy is in, in that sense also determined by this final state relaxation effects. If we, if we substitute these two equations, we end up with the well-known equation where of the binding energy with respect to the Fermi level since the spectrometer is coupled to the sample electrically. So we can now consider the chemical state analysis by core level shifts, which is illustrated here for the oxidation of aluminum. So before oxidation, we have aluminum in the metal. And when we oxidize, a thin oxide film grows on top and we see a different chemical state of aluminum associated with aluminum surrounded by oxygen in the oxide. And the difference between these peak positions is the, is the chemical shift, core level shift. As shown by Wagner and reviewed by Moretti later on, the core level shift between these two different states has two contributions, an initial state and a final state con contribution. The initial state contribution arises from the different difference in ground state energy between aluminum in the metal and aluminum in the oxide, whereas the final state contribution arises mainly from the relaxation of valence shell electrons uh, trying to screen the core hole in the photo emission process. So this is related to the electronic polarizability of the media. If we now use these core level shifts for chemical state analysis, we have some problems as shown here. Um, here I plotted uh, on the left, the aluminum 2p binding energy for different aluminum compounds and on the right side, the titanium 2p binding energy for different titanium compounds. We can see that the core level shift can clearly distinguish between different compounds. However, if we have similar polymorphs and we have only slight compositional or micro uh, structural differences, the core level shift can no longer distinguish well between the different polymorphs. <clears throat> so we conclude that core level shifts are the result of the complex balance between initial and final state effects. And the core level shifts are rather insensitive to changes in the local environment around the core ionized atom. Moreover, if you have a thin film on the substrate, we can have band bending effects as well as charging, for instance, for oxide films, which further complicates um, chemical state analysis on the basis of core level shifts. So now we can consider the OGA process in a similar way. 
by considering the energy of the initial system plus the energy of the incoming photon. We measure, of course, the emitted core electron and the kinetic energy of the emitted Auger electron. And we are left with the final system with two core holes, so N minus two state. And we see that the OGA kinetic energy is again also dependent or determined by uh, final state effects. Again, here we have the relaxation term. We have an additional final state term due to the interaction between the two core holes in the OGA process, but we typically neglect this. As shown by Wagner and Moretti, the, the OGA shift is uh, as for the a core level shift, a contribution of an initial and a final state effects. But now we see that the final state contribution is about three times the extra atomic relaxation energy. This, this implies that the Auger shifts are about two to three times larger than the respective core level shifts, which we know also from experiment, this is true. And the much larger contribution from the relaxation energy, of course, arises due to the fact that we end up with a two core hole electro, uh, state, final state, and uh, thereby the screening of the, of the valence electrons, <coughs> the screening effect is much larger. As shown by Wagner's in the 70s, we can now perform a more advanced way of chemical state analysis by combining the core level and OJ level shift informations. So uh, Wagner introduced the so-called OJ parameter shift, which is the difference in the binding energy of the photoelectron line and the kinetic energy of the corresponding OJ transition. And by summing up these two terms, we can show that this OJ parameter shift is equal to two times the exatomic relaxation energy. And this implies that the OJ parameter is only sensitive to final state effects and the initial state effects have canceled out. And why is this so interesting? Because this extra atomic relaxation factor is very sensitive to changes in the local chemical environment of the atoms in the compound. So that means we have a very sensitive probe to measure tiny changes in compositional structure, which uh, is not possible when using core level shifts. Moreover, the Auger parameter considers an energy difference between an Auger and a photoelectron line, and is therefore not affected by shifts of the Fermi level due to charging and band bending effects, which is also a huge uh, advantage. So now the, the lab-based quantum system comes into play because um, when using soft X-rays, monochromatized X-rays like aluminum or magnesium, we cannot um, excite the deep core level OJ transitions for the chemical status analysis as shown here. However, if we have now the chromium alpha source, um, we are able to measure the deep KLL transitions for important elements like aluminum, silicon, and titanium. And this was not possible with the commercial systems uh, equipped with a monochromatic soft X-ray source up to date. Uh, in the past, chemical state analysis could be performed uh, using non-monochromatic X-ray radiation because the Bram straling will allow the excitation of the deep core core excitations, and which is not possible when uh, using monochromatized uh, soft X-ray radiation. So in the past, we performed a case study using non-monochromatic radiation of the amorphous to crystalline transition of thin oxide films on aluminum substrates by monitoring the OJ parameter of the oxygen anions, which is the kinetic energy of the oxygen KLL plus the binding energy of the oxygen 1S, as well as the chemical state of the aluminum cations during the crystallization process by measuring the aluminum KLL with, with help of the Bremsstrahlung and the AL2P 
binding energy. And here you see some results of this analysis where we <coughs> plot on the left side, the oxygen OJ parameter as a function of the degree of crystallinity. And on the right side, the aluminum OJ parameter as a function of the degree of crystallinity. And you can see that the crystallization process of these oxide films are associated with very pronounced changes, decrease in the oxygen anions due to the densification of the structure and the aluminum cations do not show a very pronounced change in their local chemical state, uh, which we can understand by realizing that aluminum cations have a very strong short range ordering in the oxide structure, which doesn't change much during the crystallization process, whereas the densification and the reduction of free volume really is mainly uh, proceeding in the oxygen sublattice. And that's why we see the very strong change in the oxygen OJ parameter. We were even able to relate the shift of the OJ parameter of oxygen to the change in the local electronic polarizability as shown here. So we have the local electronic polarizability around core ionized oxygen atoms as a function of the oxidation temperature. And we studied the crystallization of the amorphous films on two different substrates, 100 and 111. And we can see that with such a concept, we were able to show that the amorphous film transforms into a crystalline film at much lower temperatures on the 100. And thus the amorphous oxide is intrinsically much more stable on the more densely packed 111 surface. So here the Qantas comes into play because uh, the Qantas is equipped with a soft and a hard X-ray source. So we can not only probe much deeper as most of you know, but the use of the chromium source also allows access to deep core level photoelectron lines and core level OJ transitions for advanced chemical state analysis. Of course, we need to consider uh, some energy calibration issues when combining soft and hard X-ray sources for chemical state analysis. Um, as described in a recent paper by us, we propose that for uh, chemical state studies of uh, oxygen containing compounds, you could use the oxygen KLL line, which can be measured with both sources for alignment of the uh, energy scales of both the sources. Other, configure, other consi considerations for uh, energy scale calibration are also given in this paper. So I recommend you to have a look at that. Another uh, thing we, which we need to consider for the chemical state analysis using two different uh, X-ray sources is the, the probing depth. Since um, if the oxide films have a gradient in the chemical state, then of course, if we probe the OJ line and the photoelectron line at a dip, different depth, then we would have an error in the analysis. So this is uh, shown here uh, for the uh, analysis of um, uh, chemical state analysis of titanium oxide films. So on the left side, we have the possible um, lines for the oxygen um, OJ parameter analysis. On the right side, the, the lines for the cation OJ parameter analysis. And here we have plotted the probing depth of each of these lines as measured with the different sources. We see here on the right side that, um, of course, the oxygen KLL line, we can measure with both sources, which can be used to calibrate the energy scale, as I previously mentioned. And then we see that the oxygen 1S, we can probe with the soft or the hard X-ray source. And if we probe with the hard X-ray source, we would probe much deeper. That means that our chemical state analysis would be performed at two different depths for the photo and OJ line, which is not recommended. So we uh, recommend for the oxygen OJ parameter studies of, of oxides or oxygen containing compounds to use only the soft X-ray source combining the o oxygen KLL line with the oxygen 1S line at near constant probing depth. For the combination or for the study of the titanium states, 
we have uh, we really require the hard x-ray source to measure the deep core uh, OGA transitions the especially the titanium KLL and you see that if you want to perform chemical state analysis of the cations at more or less constant probing depth we we need to combine the titanium KLL line with the titanium 2P or 2S as measured also with chromium source. So now I come to the latest results with our quanta system on the chemical state analysis of tin oxide films. Here we present the oxygen OJ parameter in the form of a Wagner plot, so-called Wagner plot. We plot the oxygen 1S binding energy, which is measured with aluminum source versus the oxygen KLL OJ line also measured with aluminum source and the OJ parameter is constant or is changing along the line with slope one here. So here these dashed lines here is uh, the OJ parameter change. And you can see that um, we can very nicely distinguish the OJ parameter shift for oxygen between the different oxides. The differences or the shifts are larger than three EV, which is a huge effect. The question arises if we can also use the OJ parameter shift of oxygen to separate between different oxide polymorphs. So for that, we only look at the data here for aluminum oxide on the bottom. If we enlarge that in the same type of Wagner plot, we see that we can also uh, nicely distinguish the different states of aluminum oxide when prepared, for instance, by ALD or anodization with the native oxide or the reference in this case, alpha alumina. And we see that the uh, the, the shift in the OJ parameters are larger than one EV. And typically the OJ parameter can be resolved within 0.1 EV accuracy. So these changes are really relevant. And this means that uh, we can distinguish between different oxide polymorphs, which allows also studying of compositional and structural changes in complex oxide films. How about the oxygen or the, the cation uh, OJ parameter? Here we plot the cation OJ parameter in a Wagner plot. So we have the aluminum 2P line measured with the aluminum source measure, uh, plotted against the aluminum KLL line measured with the chromium source. And we see also that we can dis uh, distinguish different local environments of aluminum in these oxide films grow by different synthesis methods and the shift in the OJ parameter is larger than 0.7 EV and um, this also shows that we can probe very nicely the local chemical state of the cations and not only of the anions when using the quantum system. So with this, I'm at the end of my talk and I would only like to give you a few take home messages. So it is well advertised that lab-based HEXPER systems allow investigations of the chemistry and electronic structure of thin films and their buried interfaces. But as shown in this talk, HEXPER also allows access to deep core level and deep OJ lines, which uh, for advanced chemical state studies based on the OJ parameter. The chemical state studies of, uh, of oxides or nitrides can be performed at constant depth using a combination of hard and soft X-ray sources uh, by smart selection of the line combinations and uh, possible variations in the detection angle. So with this, I thank you for your attention and I'm open to answer your questions later on. Thank you.